Hello gamers and welcome back to the Indie Hideout. Today we're going to be checking out a game called Defender Quest, Valley of the Forgotten. The game is a mix of two insanely addictive types of gameplay. First of all we've got Tower Defense, which I don't know about you guys but that is insanely addictive to me. And RPG. So, let's go check it out. So before I talk more about the story of the game, let's see who is responsible for giving us this amazing game. So the, the game was developed by Level Up Labs and it came out in um, the 30th of October 2012, so again, not a new game, came out last year, but I sure as hell have never heard of it, so, uh, and I don't know why, it's such an awesome game. So in Defender Quest, you play as the the main character, Azra, and uh, she basically uh, contracts some kind of plague that's um, plaguing the world, and she's thrown into a pit and left to die. But she wakes up and uh, some weird crazy shit happens, then she gets pulled into like a, a different realm and things like that, and um, so she, she's kind of like in limbo, and uh, the if you get the play you turn into this kind of zombie-esque type thing, that it's basically just a zombie, and uh, she discovers that she has the power, um, because she, she's quite helpless herself, she has the power to drag um, people into the world, and the first person you drag in is a um, like a warrior berserker type guy. And then this is this is basically your towers. Like these heroes and friends of Azra are your towers. And this is where the RPG element comes into it because instead of having you know an arrow tower or a bomb tower that does AOE and things, uh, you have these characters that are or they're in the story. You play through them in these uh, little animated scenes uh, with dialogue. And in a, you know, the standard uh, tower defense game where you'd normally level up your towers in the, the level and then it would reset the next level, uh, this one kind of has that but there's two different types. You can level up out of game, your characters gain experience and level up, like the RPG elements that we talked about. Um, these unlock different abilities and, and can give them passive strengths. And then in the actual gameplay, if you say unlocked three abilities in the gameplay there will be three levels you can level up not only to level up your strength but to unlock these abilities in the level you can also um, visit towns to buy gear for your heroes um, you can even buy more heroes which y you'll definitely need to do through the game you can't just use the heroes that are in the animated cutscenes um, I tried to stick to the least amount of heroes possible um, like right now I've got like three archers because archers are badass for penetrating armor and I've got like uh, uh, two or three berserkers and uh, some other stuff anyway yeah let's talk about the actual heroes and how many you get to play with in the game so of course we've got the berserker that I mentioned at the beginning uh, he's the crazy shirtless guy with a massive sword of course uh, then we've got the archers which are the they are very good in my opinion but they do have a, a dead zone um, let's see who else we got. We've got the mage who can uh, acts kind of like a slow tower uh, with AoEs and things. We also have a healer which is very important because the the heroes can actually get attacked and killed and you lose a lot of energy uh, which is not good. It's not good at all. So you get a healer. Uh, you also get a knight who is heavily armored meant for kind of tanking that kind of thing uh, and also has a lot of armor penetration attacks and of course we have a dragon because I mean come on it, who can have a fantasy game without a, a dragon in it? it's awesome so we get the dragon who is like just heavy DPS and ass kickery ranged attacks claws attacks oh god everything it's amazing also what I liked about the game is Azra isn't just a useless sword she doesn't just summon the heroes in to defend her but she herself is badass um, you can also level her up the same way as you can level up the heroes and she has like lightning attacks, berserker attacks to make all the towers go batshit crazy and start killing everyone. Uh, she also got like ice bombs and just loads of shit. Depends how you level her up on what abilities you kind of get. If you want no abilities then you can go down that path. If you just want to boost the hell out of your lightning abilities then you can do that. It's, it's awesome. So what about the levels? Well, um, I haven't yet completed the storyline and I've been on this game for over 12 hours. Uh, it's, it's really that addictive and um, yeah so I haven't completed the storyline and the levels have so much replayability already like I've already played multiple levels like six or seven times because what there is is there's a three 
there's three stars you can get. Um, and you unlock these on the different difficulty modes in the game. And there's blue stars if you get past the, the difficulty mode, but if you get past it perfectly, you get a gold star. So I've been kind of like tripping out trying to get all of the gold stars on the levels. And it is quite difficult, but the sense of like achievement once you've done that and the uh, the experience you guys get, you're like, yeah, level up, fuck yeah. Is that just me? Okay, that, might, that might be just me. As much time as I sank into this game and loved every minute of it, there are a few downsides. For example, um, there is no multiplayer, so you can't show off your um, heroes and their awesome gear to anyone, and you can't uh, battle them. I mean, uh, the, one of the really awesome things that I found in, um, I don't know if anyone played, the Warcraft 3 tower defense mods where you could actually spend your money on not only upgrading your units, but increasing your income by sending enemy waves at, um, of course, your opponent. Now that was a really cool game mode and I would have loved to see that in here, but it didn't happen. But even without that multiplayer element that I think could have been amazing in this game, I am still <laughs> going to play the hell out of this game. A lot of people say, oh well, single player games, once you finish it, it's kind of it, there's no multiplayer, that's it, I'm done. This is not one of them games at all, you are definitely going to sink. I know for sure I'm going to sink at least 50 hours into this game. I'm already up to 12 and I'm not even finished the storyline. Even once I finish the storyline, I am going to go back and complete the shit out of the stars that I missed. So here at the Indie Hideout, the Defender Quest value I've gotten is an amazing game. Oh, I can't recommend it enough. Uh, I'm going to give this game a 8 out of 10 here at the Indie Hideout. Alright guys. That's all for now. Sorry there's been a while uh, for a video to come out. I've been moving back into my house from university and oh, I've got to sort some stuff out and, blah, 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 and all that crap. Um, also, I did find another cool game that I want to quickly mention. Uh, any Game of Thrones fans who uh, can't wait to, uh, to, to, to get more Game of Thrones on, uh, I found a cool game called Game of Thrones Ascent. If you want to go check that out, I will put a link in the description below as well as a link to the Steam page with uh, Defender Quest on. And uh, yeah, see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.